This is Brent with Likens Motorsports. This is an aluminum Shelby Ford FE block. So this is going to be the foundation for one of the 496s. Well, it's actually not a 496. It's gonna be a, about a 510 cubic inch uh, all aluminum FE. Uh, if you've been watching on the channel, uh, I've already featured the cylinder heads that are gonna be used for this build. They are new FE power cylinder heads and they flow pretty close to about a 430 CFM. Uh, so this is gonna be a spicy one. And uh, I'm just gonna show you some things, some features of this block. Uh, I don't think I've ever featured one on the channel yet. So we're gonna go over some different things about this block, about the build. And um, just talk a little bit about the, the engine block itself. Uh, if you notice, it is a uh, billet main cap, studded mains. Uh, so essentially two, four, six, six bolts per, or six fasteners per main cap on the middle three. Very beefy. Screw in freeze plugs. Got the Shelby logo down here. Got a C6 AEH engineering number. Not really for sure what that refers to, but um, that's what's on there. So if you notice, this is the driver's side of the block. There is no hump going down the, um, the side of the block for uh, a side oiler type configuration. <laughs> Instead, the Shelby block has its own oiling system. And um, let me get, probably be better if I got this flipped over on the cart, then we'll be able to see a little bit more detail about it. All right, so we go to right side up and as, you, as I just said, there's no side oiler bulge on this side. There's no pipe plugs going to each main because this block oils more like a Windsor block. And if you notice, you have a clean out for this lifter gallery. You have a clean out for this lifter gallery behind the distributor bore. And then you have this main oil feed and this is a priority main block. So that passage goes all the way down through here. And then at the very end, after all the mains and the rods and cam and everything is oiled, uh, then it splits off, comes up here, and then is uh, shooting off to each lifter side, each lifter bank. So pretty nice set up uh, if you notice i've got lifter bore bushings in this one uh, we're going to be aiming for a lot of horsepower and quite a bit of rpm so um, i opted to have bronze lifter bore bushings installed these are not 875 but instead we stepped up to a 904 lifter and these are bam solid roller lifters and a little bit larger diameter bodies for a little bit extra rigidity and a different uh, roller bearing size as well. So pretty, uh, pretty substantial piece. So what we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna flip it back over and we're gonna go over some of the things that we're gonna do. Um, I still have to align hone the mains, so we're gonna keep the block. It's not clean yet, and uh, we've got one more machining process to um, to go through before it gets a final wash. But if you notice, here's uh, the feeds to the heads are threaded so that you can restrict or block those off. Um, an external uh, feed for dry sump if you happen to use that which we are and um, 
this engine is going to be completely dry sump which means that uh, we're not going to use the typical uh, oil filter adapter here we're going to have a uh, an adapter that has one fitting in it so that we can put pressurized oil into the block uh, that means that we will not have to gasket match the oil pump flange on the bottom of the block. It will get capped off since there will be no oil pump inside the engine. This is a large bore block. It's a 4375 block and um, 10 150 deck height. So 4375 with a four and a quarter stroke, we're at about 510 cubic inches. All right, let's get her upside down again, and we'll go over some of the things we need to do to prep this block. Before I do that, let me point out, um, this block uses a special set of head studs. And uh, you can see here, well, maybe you can't, this light is, is beyond bright, but the head fastener holes are smooth until you get down inside of it. So, the head fasteners pull from way down here, which is kind of a unique setup. Um, but it helps to not to distort the deck surface as much. Got the Shelby logo. So normally um, we work this hole and gasket match it. Uh, like I said earlier, this is gonna be a dry sump block. So um, I'm actually, I've got quite a few dry sump engines in the works here. So I'm having some billet aluminum cover plates made for this. And you would just put the gasket on and then this would, the plate would go down over top of it and you would bolt it down. So um, most guys make their own plate to cover it or tap this to a pipe plug but uh, this would be an easy um easy fix for that just bolt it on um and not have to worry about any anything else uh typical fe size mains of course i think what i'm going to do now um the block is is filthy dirty so i'm not going to put the cam bearings in if i were going to put the cam bearings in since this is an aluminum block uh guys have their own ways of, of dealing with that but in one fashion or another you need to make sure that the cam bearing will not rotate or walk uh, aluminum blocks are very bad for expanding when they're when they get hot and uh Things like valve lash and um, compression ratio even on an aluminum block will change when when the block gets hot. Typical um, typical lash growth for an iron block aluminum headed combination. Uh, the lash usually grows about six thousandths um, on an all aluminum engine like this FE. Uh, with a solid cam, lash will grow about 14 thousandths. So the aluminum just moves a lot. And um, uh, you have to take an allowance with that when you figure up the compression ratio because what happens is the block will grow around your sleeve. So the sleeve will stay put. The block itself will grow up around it, which moves your head, which decreases your compression ratio. So... Quite a few differences with the aluminum stuff that you have to take into account. Even main bearing clearances, uh, since you have aluminum on one side and steel on the other side, uh, your main bearing clearances will grow when the block gets hot, so you have to take that into account uh, when you set up your bearing clearances. Uh, I usually set them up about a half thou tighter on, on an all aluminum application. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to grab my die grinder with a cartridge roll and we're going to um, deburr the bottoms of the cylinders. So we do that so that the pistons do not pick up 
uh, any uh, material. Uh, what happens if you don't do that, the piston comes out of the bore a little bit and it will inevitably cock a little bit and it will roll some of the aluminum up on the piston and then you get aluminum all up in your bore and then it just kind of cascades from there. So uh, make sure that when you in and this this applies to any engine block and any engine family but make sure and deburr this uh edge and on the top side uh what happens is after the boring and honing process it leaves a little sharp edge so that needs to be smoothed out so i'm going to get that done now that'll be one step that we won't have to do later oh and and talking about the can bearings sorry i kind of lost my train of thought train of thought uh when on these cam bearings when i go to knock those in i will use some green loctite around the bearing and that will keep it from from wanting to rotate or move when the block gets hot some guys will actually drill through the bearing and into the block and pin them uh you don't have to do that necessarily but uh, you got to use some way to keep the bearing from from moving around all right, we got the bottoms and the tops of our cylinders deburred. Uh, I'll always check this hole behind the distributor bore. If the pipe plug sticks out too far, the distributor will not go in. So I always check that. This one needed to be tapped uh, a couple of threads deeper. And I use a six inch, quarter inch pipe plug or pipe thread tap uh, to do that. And uh, now we have uh, sufficient thread engagement where the distributor will not catch the plug. So that's another interesting oiling change is uh, these feeds that normally feed your rocker arms that come up through the deck of the block and up through the head. Uh, on a typical FE block, these are uh, fed by the cam bearing. On this block, it's fed by the lifter bore gallery so you can see my light down there in that bore off on off on so this passage here it, that comes that intersects this lifter gallery feeds this one and likewise this passage here feeds this one one more interesting thing about this block I'm going to give you a second to look at the front of this. Think about where the normal bolt holes are on the front of a typical FE block. We're normally used to seeing the thrust plate bolts something like this. Our thrust plate bolts are now here and here. So it clocks like this on, on this block. changing things around. So that's just some of the uh, different characteristics of this block. A lot of guys don't get to see this kind of block. This block is about $8,000 by itself. So um, just a kind of a rare piece. So we're gonna go ahead and get this block line honed and uh, get a good wash on it. And the good thing is I don't have to paint it. <laughs> so it'll stay just like this but um this this build is going to be really nice uh we got a a billet crankshaft coming from bryant we're using cali's rods i just ordered the diamond pistons for it yesterday and um got some tool steel dlc coated wrist pins since we're doing dry sump and uh, we're going to be pulling a lot of vacuum on on this on this engine uh jay brown's FE power cylinder heads, uh, one of my custom round lobe solid roller camshafts, and uh, just uh, about 11, well, I figured it for about 11.2 to 1 compression. Um, it will bleed off just a little bit once the block gets hot, but um, it's going to be going to be a nice piece for sure. I'm still waiting on parts to trickle in, but uh, you will for sure see everything that comes in for this build as it comes in. Hope you guys are having a good weekend or a good week and that you'll have a good weekend. Um, I'm just trying to get some things moved through the shop 
and uh, just picked this block up today uh, from having a lot of the machine work done. I wanted to go over it and uh, just check some things out before uh, I had the mains honed, but uh, looking good so far. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that so that you don't miss out on the rest of this build. This is gonna be a treat and a half. I've got two builds coming with Jay Brown's heads. Um, the next one's gonna be a little bit rowdier than this one, a lot higher compression and that sort of thing. This one's gonna be the Cross Ram uh, EFI, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna squeeze some horsepower out of it. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon.